Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Super Mario Galaxy. So last time we kicked stuff off, heard a little bit about the scintillating story, the intense, deep lore of the Super Mario Galaxy duology. So we were told that there is this galaxy observatory that has been flying around space every 100 years. It comes into contact with the Star Festival. But uh, some things were afoot when Bowser decided to have some shenanigans. So we were here, we met Rosalina, we met Luma, who gave us the power to spin. We are a dancer, which is great. So we were instructed to collect the grand stars along with other power stars to power up the Comet Observatory. And in doing so, we will be able to get closer to our little, our, our little one, our special one. I think Peach is actually taller than Mario. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. The first of our destinations is here in the terrace. So we're gonna get started. This is only episode two, but I just wanted to say thank you in advance to people who have started to watch this new series. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it already. Feel free to continue to comment and subscribe, like it, whatever fits your fancy. I love reading comments, that's my big thing. Maybe I'll start trying to engage a little bit more. I'm gonna be asking some questions throughout the course of these videos to try to get you guys something to, to chew on a little bit and to uh, engage. So we'll have some fun. So we're being told about another dynamic here. This is a mechanic called the pull star. This is something that, uh, this is a, I guess, subscreen mechanic with grabbing this pull star to get you into the hub world. However, this will become very quickly an in-game mechanic, which is hit or miss. I don't love it, but hey, whatever. So they're telling you all you need to know. You collect power stars, you can enter the zone, the galaxy of the amount of power stars that you have. It'll get to a point when we have so many that this is kind of arbitrary. I'm going to try to complete most of the galaxies in a decent enough of a pattern that it doesn't seem too sporadic, but we'll jump around a little bit. We'll come back to some stuff. So we're going to start with the good egg galaxy. This is your tutorial galaxy. This one's pretty fun. This intro Galaxy music always gets me pumped up. This is the Dino Piranha. This is always a ton of fun. I just remember when I first got this game, when I was a kid, that I I powered through this. I got this game for Christmas, I believe, that year uh, when it came out. And I just remember having a ton of fun with it. This was back when, you know, gaming for me was pretty much purely Nintendo. I didn't have a computer or anything. So I spent a lot of my free time playing the old Wii. You know, when you're when you're alone and you're a kid, sometimes you just gotta play with your Wii. It's, it's good for you, it's good for your health. So you can do whatever you want. Oh, I can, let's, apparently we can read this. All right, so you can do that. Or, no, <laughs> that's not the button I meant to push. You can do that or you can do a backflip here and a spin. Maybe. Okay. Take two. Huh? Yeah, there we go. Let's see what this has to say. So yeah, that's just... Whatever. That's the game telling you that... You can quit out of the current circumstance that you're in if you want, but you will lose your star bits. So just be mindful of that. You gotta complete the level. We will go through our first music note follow along puzzle. The underground theme of Super Mario Brothers. And your reward is A1 up. Which I believe is going to try to trickle down. Okay, great. That was definitely worth it. One of the things that I don't really have trouble with when I play this game are lives. Now, additionally so... I guess lives would make more sense playing the game how it's intended to, where you would like save and quit. But when I play most of these games on my Switch, I just put them into sleep mode. So essentially the lives will just 
perpetually add up and there's no real technically there's no technical end to what I'm doing you know I'm not saving and quitting get over here thank you so I just wind up stockpiling a bunch of lives I mean there are some points in this game where I will tell you they do get it gets pretty tough this game in general is not abundantly difficult I mean it is a game meant for El Nino or Los Ninos, I should say. It's, it's meant for a child. It's meant for just one child. Um, Les Enfants, we'll say that. And, you know, it's not too bad. But there are some levels, especially near the end of the game, when you've got some trickier moments that it it can really get you, can really get your goat. So that loom is going to kindly sacrifice his life and turn into a pull star for us, or a sling star been one episode and I'm already forgetting what things are called so we're doing great anyway this planet is filled with these weird overcooked meatballs they will be traipsing around you gotta watch that goo there it is hard to navigate through it's like some quicksand sort so another story I guess about this game um, uh, I was a bit of a, a latecomer to the life cycle of the Wii. I think the Wii came out and like, okay. <laughs> Let's not have our first on-screen death be to this. Oh boy. Okay, and I'm getting, and I'm getting stuck. That's another thing that's also tricky about this. I wasn't getting stuck because of the, the goo. That was actually me getting stuck because my, my control stick was stuck in a pattern. I think you could see that, like I was spinning in circles. That's annoying. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I was a bit of a, a latecomer to... Get out of here. To the Wii. I... I didn't wind up actually getting one until... I want to say maybe a year or so after it came out. And I had it. I mean, like, I had the opportunity to get it. So, all right. <laughs> If I could not embarrass myself for five seconds, that'd be wonderful. You kill that Prana Planet, it opens up this vine, and then you just gotta... You gotta actually shake the controller or the Joy-Con, so... That's kind of fun. Gets you a little exercise, I suppose. So, when I was a kid, and I wanted a Wii, I remember I brought it up. Getting a game console was something that... was kind of historic for me as a child. I'm sure people can relate. It was a big moment. You know, you're a little kid, it's Christmas or your birthday, and maybe... it's the holiday season. And, you know, here in the States, or I guess in North America in general, I should say, I'm sure it's probably the same. Christmas is a huge deal, especially when it comes to media companies and IPs and, you know, games and stuff like that. So I was super excited when the Wii was announced and when it was going to come out. And I remember, because back then there wasn't really, you know, much of, I didn't really have much of an internet presence. I didn't really... You know, I didn't really use the computer too much. We didn't have a ton of money, so didn't really have a... We had, like, a family computer, but it was one of those, like, oh, you can have an hour on it to do your homework, whatever. So when I finally found out about the Wii by watching commercials on TV and stuff like that or, like, through friends at school, I remember that I was super excited for it. And the only game that I knew about was Twilight Princess because that was the only one that I believe was noteworthy of the launch titles from my memory. I mean, there might have been others, but I was I was super pumped for it. And I remember I had mentioned it to my family that I wanted to, to get that game. And, you know, I'm the youngest in my family of my siblings. And so I'll try not to talk over this boss fight too much. This is pretty simple, though. I'll give you the mechanics real quick. We have a very curious shelled creature here with his tail sticking out. So let's go ahead and bop him. This actually feels kind of rude now that I'm thinking about it. I know that this guy is like, quote unquote, an enemy and stuff like that. But I mean, like, whatever. You know, he's just, he's a, he's a baby. And we're just, you know, coming in here and we're abusing an infant. Don't do that, folks. Whether it's piranha related or not. This spot here where I think this is where the egg was and the, and the, where the feet are. It's kind of a nice little touch. Looks like a nest. They're going to traipse around and break open these crystals, which is cool because, thank you, it frees you up to 
collect the star bits without having to do too much additional work. Come on, break it. All right, never mind. I'll do that one. That's a freebie. Oh boy, I just want to. Okay. If you kind of cut him off at the at the pass, that'll help. Oh, I thought it was three hits. It is not. The first egg hit does not count. So anyway, back to my story. I was excited as a kid to get that Wii, and I remember I'd asked for it, and Christmas rolls around, super pumped. I was like, this is my chance to finally get a, a new game console, because the last one that I had at the time was a GameCube, which I remember having a lot of difficulty getting anyway. Let's do some, let's make this cool. Yeah. Gotta do it with style. We got that star. We only had to commit homicide of an infant. Don't do that. So, treat babies with respect. That is our first legitimate power star, as opposed to the illegitimate ones. So we will save, I guess. We don't really need to do that. I'm probably not gonna do that after every star, just because it's not really necessary. Uh, excuse you, I already talked about this. Christmas rolls around, very pumped, and what happens is my first gift, my family has a very strange tradition of opening presents. We take turns. Everybody gets a gift here and there, and... Oh, you want those? He's hungry. That's great. Okay, is that good enough for you? That's something that we'll actually have to do in much larger quantities later to things like it just mentioned, Hungry Lumas. That's why I recommend collecting a lot of star bits because you can't complete the game. You're gonna need thousands, so just to keep that in mind. Can we open this? No, okay. So we're back to Good Egg Galaxy for star number two. First present I open is a gift from my, from my sister. She's a lot older than me. She had a job at that point, so she, she got me a game, which was really nice. And I opened it, Twilight Princess. Very excited, super cool, very sweet of her to get that from me. Until I realized that uh, the rest of my day was going to be... There was a lot of anxiety, I guess, you know, because you get that and you're just like, all right, this is awesome. Like, you know, we're moving and grooving. We're getting ourselves on the way to... to New Consoleville, right? Like, that's awesome. Now... I'm not trying to sound like entitled or privileged or anything like that, but I mean, you have expectations when you're a kid. You know, you get a gift that, for all intents and purposes, you're led to believe is going to turn into what you think it is, you know? It's like, if you got a, uh... Oh, I've already been here. If you get a, um... I'm trying to think of a, a good example. I mean, there probably isn't really a ton, but... A, uh... You get, you get part of something, and then you expect to get the rest of it. You know, it just makes sense. I, okay. Well, I don't, no, I'm okay. You don't want to waste your star bits on enemies. I mean, you can stun them if you need to, but, I mean, realistically speaking, you should be able to pick them up just fine. Hold on to them if you can. And here is the introduction to in-game pull star. I don't love these. There are some challenges later on that uh, are really frustrating, especially because those pull stars, they don't really tell you that. You don't have to hold on to them just like that and pull yourself along. You can kind of grab one that's further along and coast a little bit and then kind of shimmy back and forth depending upon where you are to gain momentum because you'll need to gain momentum for later challenges in order to, to make yourself have enough distance and speed to get to where you need to be. But anyway, so you have anticipation as a kid. You are trying to set yourself up to be excited for something. Let's say, for instance, you got a... You're into art, and you got a sketchbook. Then maybe you'd expect to get some some pencils or some... Maybe like an, some oil paints or something like that. You know, like it's things that go with it, right? So I remember that I was super excited for... For the remainder of the day, you know, the opening of the gifts takes so long because of how we do it. And, you know, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But I just remember the last gift that I opened that day wasn't a Wii. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I was a little disappointed. And I was a kid. So, you know, the way that I'm reacting with my smooth kid brain at that point was probably not very appropriate. 
I probably had a bit of a fit, whatever. I'm sure we all have had those in our moments in our lives when you get your hopes up for something and then it doesn't go the way that you want. But, uh, you know, you gotta be grateful for what you have, grateful for your family and the things they do for you, of course. It's, you know, you only get one family. Hopefully they're good to you. But, um, yeah, I didn't get a Wii. And I was disappointed because I didn't have a way to play that game. So, I was, wasn't really sure what to do with that. I kind of sat on my hands a little bit. I remember that Twilight Princess came out around that, that Christmas season, and I don't think I got a Wii to like the following spring. So, like, I was just like six months of nothing, which is whatever. I was a kid, I'll live. I'll find other things to do. I probably had a DS or something. This is our introduction to Hungry Loomis. I don't know how many he needs. 100. I don't think we have that yet. No, we're close. Oh, no. Okay, great. Can I get two from here? Perfect. Yeah, this can be kind of frustrating because this Hungry Loma is... You know, you have to kind of... I don't want to say it's a hidden star. It's not a hidden star. But it's not the intended star for this route. I'm actually going a little off the cuff here. Taking the scenic route. So that's fun. But... That Hungry Luma will spontaneously combust into a whole new planetoid. You get pink launch stars when there are special planetoids that you unlock. So you'll have to essentially go through and do the same mission again if you want to come back to this one. It's going to be... It, it's identical up until this point. This is where things diverge a little bit. So you can play it however you want to, in any order that you want to for the most part based on how you unlock them, but certain stars unlock certain pathways in the same way that you can only get to certain places in like 64. So it makes sense. It's the same same kind of context, I guess. So yeah, that following spring, I finally got a Wii and I was able to play Twilight Princess and not finish it because I was a child and that game is spooky. So... I really enjoyed it though, I remember that being really fun. I mean, Twilight Princess is a fantastic game, Any, pretty much any of the Zelda games are going to be great as long as it's uh, one of the main series ones. Who knows, I mean it's- oh. That's not how you wall jump, Mario. Mario, there you go. So yeah, but all, all is well. You know, this game is now on the Switch, I was able to acquire it as an adult with my own adult monies. So that's fun. No complaints. So we're here on this gigantic suppository. That's fun. I don't know who that's for. Somebody needs to take their medication. I... I do remember though, you know, circling back to this game in particular. When I first got it for Christmas, the year that it came out, it just blew me away. The last... 3D Mario that I played was 64, I believe, and that's just because I my experience with my GameCube was very hit or miss. You know, I was a lot younger, and so getting games was kind of like a, hey, pick out what looks cool in the store, and sometimes you'll wind up with a gem, and sometimes you won't. I was the kid who, when I bought my GameCube, or my parents did, I, I'm assuming, from Toys R Us, I had the option of getting a bunch of cool games, a bunch of AAA titles, you know, your Metroid, your Wind Waker. Your Mario Kart Double Dash. And I chose Star Fox because I was not very smart as a child. So we all make mistakes, everybody. And that's mine. Don't make that mistake. I look back on that. Ooh, that was close. And I cringe a little bit just because I eventually wound up owning all the rest of those games, but not first, before I had to play through Star Fox Adventures and I hated every moment of it because that game is not the other ones. Is it a bad game? No. But compared to those other games, which are actually all legendary and entirely, you know, replayable from start to finish a million billion times, Star Fox Adventures is not that. So I'm not here to criticize the game. I'm not here to knock on it or anything like that. But I just missed an opportunity to, to really enjoy something great. So, hey, we all make mistakes. That's a good question for you. For those listening. Do you have any moments like that in your life when you were super confident, or maybe not, of making a decision like buying a game, and you wound up pulling the trigger on something that turned out to not be your favorite after the fact. Any thoughts on that?
comment down below or up above or wherever you want to comment. Maybe you're holding your computer upside down. I don't know. Live your dreams, everybody. Don't let me tell you how to live. And definitely don't let your dreams be dreams. Okay. I would like to get more done in this episode because I feel like these stars are uh, not really that complicated. But once again, this is... <laughs> This gravity is giving me a little bit of an issue just because of my my controller is not cooperating. That's what I'm going to say anytime I have trouble. Well, guys, actually, it was the uh, controller that wasn't cooperating. So I can show you. I'm going to try to demonstrate here a little bit that you can play around with the pull stars. You can kind of drift past them and pull yourself back. You can hold on to them in one place. You know, whatever works for you, I suppose, but... There are going to be challenges later on where you can like swing back and, you know, pull yourself in and I don't know if I necessarily care for those, but all you gotta do is line yourself up and slide on in. Star number three. Exciting times, guys. We're doing it. Can you believe it? We are doing it. We're having a good time. So that was the... I guess pseudo alternative star. It's required 400%. But we opened up a new a new location. Pretty cool. I'm not going to save. Like I said, we save and quit. We'll do that at the end. That's the dirty work. So, in every galaxy there's going to be a boss in this case with 8 stars that opens up whatever that is. So to break up the video a little bit, I normally do these stars in order just for simplicity's sake, but we're going to have some fun and we'll do a start here. This will probably be the final one in the video based on duration. And we're going to learn about a new power-up that was exclusive to this game and its successor. Pretty fun. Hopefully we can make haste on this one. This level might be a little bit on the longer side, so I'm going to try to... We'll spend more time exploring in the future, but I I want to make sure I'm getting a good dose of level and fun all at the same time. You gotta be, you gotta be sensitive to the, t to the schedule, everybody's schedules. So collecting that big old coin gives us our first look at the new power-up. It looks kind of like a B, because it is. Good eye, everybody. Thank you for that. That was excellent platforming by me. It's actually me, uh, once again, showing you what not to do. So now we are B Mario. It's time to buzz around. You can still jump. Holding the button, though, will allow you to hover and to gain height. Now, B Mario is highly allergic to water. If you touch water of any kind at any point, whether it's a droplet of water, it's a waterfall, it is a pool of water, you will lose your power up and have to find another one. Now, thankfully, they are normally scattered around in the power up crystals, so you should be okay. So our first challenge has us using our almost full duration of B ability. We have to be our best. <laughs> so you can walk through the honey here. It'll kind of stick to you like the quicksand did in the first level. Landing on flowers will recharge your ability to fly, which is cool. So just kind of wade through that and get to the launch star. Once again, any sort of contact with water will temporarily Lose your power up, so that's kind of a that's a bit of a bust. But hey, we're fine. Power up right here. That's not always the case. You don't always necessarily have a power up that's nearby, so you just need to be careful. You're gonna want to just mind your P's and Q's. Mind your B's and Q's. How about that? All right. You don't want to step on any of those watery spots. Mario's not a moist boy. He's not into that. So let's help him out. You know, he doesn't like to get wet. I get it. Any sort of encounter with water as such will cause you problems. It's not really a huge issue, but there will be some spots later on in some of the levels where things get kind of tight and they they plan it 
in such a way that is to kind of trip you up. So just be mindful. Now this honey is a little different. You are not hindered by this honey. You're actually able to climb on it, which is cool. You can use it as a bit of a platform to get from spot to spot. Landing on it will recharge your, your bee meter to fly. Mario likes to fly. Mario is pretty fly for a bee guy. So you can make some pretty good distance on your on your jumps if you get the right direction. So we're gonna try to not get eaten by this piranha plant. You knock him out. Get yourself cutscene. She thinks we're Dr. Mario. That's a nice little throw in. But she's itchy. And we have to figure out why. What is plugging this beautiful bee? Now you can already kind of see it clipping through her body on the bottom side, shimmering. She has star chips on her body. Now, oddly enough, the way that you solve this problem is you crawl around and you pick them up. This is kind of weird, to be honest. Um, I mean, I'm all for a nice back scratching, but you got to get that consent first, everybody. You ask. You're welcome. So, doing the duty for the queen, helping her out, as per her request, gets us a launch star, so that's nice. Collect some star bits too while we're here. You're gonna make sure you have a lot of those, everybody, don't forget, because you're gonna need quite a few to complete some of the later challenges. Doing that pops you all the way up to the top of the tree. This is where we started. And look who it is. This, I believe, is his first introduction into the series. I could be wrong, but... We are talking to the... Notorious Captain Toad, who gives us a power star. That's cool. Thanks, bud. Tells us about Luigi being in this game. Nice. Now, Captain Toad... You know, there's a, there's a titular series of Captain Toad. This guy's having a good time. And... That game, you know, it's a standalone series by itself. I don't know if there's actually more than one. I think there's just the one that was for the Wii U and then ported to the Switch, which is fun. Those games are, those games are cool. They're unique. I mean, they're not... They're different. We'll say they're different. And I, I enjoyed them. So, that's kind of my, my Jimmy Jam is, uh... The games that Captain Toad is in, maybe not the Captain Toad game by itself. So. The Lumas didn't tell her what our name was? Come on. Look. But we did make some friends over in the garage. So we'll go ahead and pop over there and then we'll call it a day. Let's go, we'll save this time. So yeah, the Captain Toad experience in this game is just one-offs. You'll find him every so often. Help him out if he's going through a little bit of trouble. He actually makes more of an appearance in the in the second Galaxy game and also in Mario 3D World. So if you wanted to spend more time with the Captain Toad game, that's where you do it, or the Captain Toad game itself. That's very kind, Captain Toad. I don't think he actually addresses himself as Captain Toad prior to that, so yeah, I think this is your first experience with him. So, we got some toads of all different shapes and sizes and colors. That's fun, right? Yeah? Alright. So, next time we're going to pop back into the terrace, collect some more stars, and maybe we'll have enough to fight our next boss, or our first boss, soon. So thanks for joining me, everybody. It's been a good time. Hope you enjoyed yourself. I'll see you later. Bye.